Have you ever tried to draw your favorite cartoon character and then proceeded to have a stroke or look like you had one? Well, that is character design and it's something I'm going to attempt to learn in 30 days. I started by drawing the best character design I can think of. <laughs> okay, so how did I improve? I locked myself in a room and watched hundreds of YouTube drawing advice videos. And they all say the same thing. Start with shapes. I warmed up with a page of circles. Not only did I build confidence in my lines, but it got me to draw from my shoulder and not my wrist. I then started with spheres, cubes, pyramids, and cones. These were great shapes to start with because they helped me learn the basics of perspective, value, and volume. The goal here is to train your brain to turn complex objects into simple 2D shapes, all while developing an understanding of how light works. I then tried to draw this dog. By starting with simpler shapes, I was able to complete my best drawing of a dog in just 20 minutes. I was so happy I drew these birds, a llama, and a kangaroo, and it was only the second day. Figure drawing. It's the next step, and honestly what I spent most of my time doing. Here's my first one. What? It's just an ordinary crabby- OH MY GOODNESS! I showed this to my art friend, and she told me to do gesture drawings. To use guiding lines and a line of action. Make a super rough skeleton, that way I am forced to just capture the energy of the pose. Oh, and she told me I shouldn't spend more than 15 seconds to a minute on each. What? <laughs> So after doing a hundred of those, it was at this point when I decided to move from a small iPad to new sprint paper and Conte. I then spent the next two weeks figure drawing. And after four new sprint paper books filled, many live model drop-in sessions, and thousands of digital figures, I eventually saw improvement. Now is finally time to design my own original characters. I opened Procreate and I quickly realized drawing from life and drawing cartoons are not the same. My brain did not understand how to take a regular human body and stylize it. So I looked to one of the building blocks of character design, shape language. Shape language is when certain emotions are provoked when looking at basic shapes. Think of Carl from Up, Anger from Inside Out, or the Kingpin from Into the Spider-Verse. They're tough, stubborn, hard-headed. They're squares, and that fits their personality. And you can start to see that in my basic shape characters I started with. I then tried to do a combination of two shapes, one for the head and one for the body, but I quickly saw I could not draw hands or feet. So I took a couple hours studying hands and feet pictures. And when I went back, I then realized I didn't know how to draw heads. So I studied the Loomis method and tried legendary animator Walt Stanfield's to oval method. Both of these studies help me understand how to draw the human head in any position and how to proportion the facial features on a head. As I drew more and more, I began to measure my characters a number of heads tall. Now this is another building block of character design as it ensures consistency and tells the animators when they're drawing on model or off model. I kept drawing and I eventually noticed that my characters either had no face at all or the same lifeless face. It's time to study expressions. Hello, Ebulinian! Oh my god! Facial expressions. You ever wonder how Pixar or Illumination are so successful despite telling stories 
but the most non-human characters. Well, part of it is because of the emotions that are captured through those big, uncanny eyes. Without clear and exaggerated facial expressions, you're going to get something dull, lost, and lifeless, like my drawing. So to conquer expressions, I experimented with different stylized eyes and eyebrows. I'm especially proud of this one because I used shape language and how I drew the facial features, which directly influenced how I drew the rest of the body. It's now time to introduce you to my favorite character designer on YouTube, Bill's Design Corner. Bill has 16 years in the animation slash character design industry and is coming up on his 10th year on YouTube. And one of the ways he suggests beginners when designing characters is to start with head shapes. Create a whole page of head shapes and make them as interesting as possible by putting the eye line anywhere but the center. Such a subtle detail, but makes perfect sense. It literally forces you to exaggerate one part of the face. And if it's anything about character design I learned, is that the more you exaggerate, the more interesting character you can get. This also helps with creating unique silhouettes. Think of Sully, Doofenshmirtz, Hey Arnold. All have such unique character designs, and part of that is their interesting looking head shapes. I then added hair shapes to my characters, and just like that, I can already see personalities come through without even drawing the body or face. This was genuinely so cool. I picked up my favorite six and sketched bodies to either match the head shape personality or juxtapose it. I then picked my favorite one out of the six and gathered references for the samurai character I imagined this guy to be. And by day 21, I had created a rough sketch of an original 2D character. Now that I had the default stance, I knew the next step was doing a turnaround. So I started with the head, then added the body later. I then explored different expressions on how the samurai dude would look like. I honestly struggled a lot here with getting the right squash and stretch in the face and head shape. And I honestly don't think I got it perfect, but after many failed attempts, I ended up with a full set of expressions I'm happy with. I then cleaned up my line art and all that was left was color. At this point, I felt stuck. I knew the next step was color, but I tried it once and it was disgusting. I needed help. I reached out to a few professional character designers on LinkedIn, and what do you know, one replied. She's a full-time character designer in Toronto, Canada, and we scheduled a call later that week. Do you see any like potential missteps I'm doing with how I'm creating my character? Like if, for example, if you made like, um, is this going this way? This is going out this way? Then if you made like this like straighter or something, I think it would stand out even more. Mm -hmm. Which really would contrast with like how this is going out or something. Or if you made it bend a little more or something, it would really like emphasize, I guess, like, yeah, the action of that. Gotcha. Color study. So you, you said you do tonal study. So is that just doing black and white? I guess that's like taking like a movie screen cap and then you basically you try to like just paint it. But this one's like really detailed by the way, but like. Oh my gosh. Yeah. I was like, for a second, I was like, they're both the same. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but this, you don't have to go into detail. Like this, this sort of blocking of colors. I don't see the direct connection when I go in to add color, like to my character. I think as soon as you like do this blocking and stuff, then when you move on to color, for example, like then you can just start seeing it. Like it will change your perspective in terms of like when you can just, uh, cause you know, right now, like struggling with color, you're just like, what colors do I pick and stuff like that. But like, once you understand like tones and everything where the lighting comes from, you can understand like what colors can be needed in that like illustration. Jessica if you're watching this, thank you again. You're amazing. After the call, I tried grayscale value blocking some of my favorite movie scenes. And I saw some success, but with just a few days left, I decided I'm gonna just go straight to color. I did color studies and I saw some more success, but I was still traumatized from my first time coloring my samurai character. So in a last ditch effort to learn other styles and with Pokemon Scarlet now officially out, I challenged myself to create my very own Pokemon trainer in classic 2D Pokemon style. I knew I wanted the behind the back Look, so I grabbed a few references online and even posed myself for it. And in less than four hours, I created the best illustration I've ever done. On day 27, 28, and 29, I finally picked the colors for my samurai character, fixed the leg that Jessica mentioned, drew a ton of action poses, posed myself again to get the right angle of the arm, and did a rough sketch for my final illustration. And on the last day, I put everything together and completed my first full page illustration of the original 2D character.
And any other advice for me or even like aspiring like character designers? With character design and stuff, it's like the key of it is character. So to make your character feel alive is to give it a personality and make your world believable.